DNA is present in the nucleus of the cell and can replicate within the nucleus when creating a new cell. How is that information encoded into the DNA in the nucleus alter the life of the cell as a whole? And what role do ribosomes play in this information transfer? Well, just like when DNA copies itself, it can unzip itself along the nucleotide ladder running down the strands of DNA. Sometimes it can unzip parts of the strand in order to allow information to be transferred. This time, pairing off of the open nucleotide bonds, rather than having a long strand of DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid being formed, instead only a small portion of the strand is paired off with a similar molecule. It's called RNA or ribonucleic acid, sometimes also called messenger RNA due to the way it acts within the cell. There's some subtle differences between DNA and RNA other than just the length of the strands. Two of the key differences is due to the slightly different structure, RNA will eventually dissolve in the water of the cell, meaning RNA is far less stable than DNA. Second is that where DNA has cytosine, adenine, thymine and guanine as the nucleotides, in RNA, the thymine is replaced with uracil. Now the two common types of RNA that are produced generally relate to the job of protein synthesis within a cell. They are transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA. Now transfer RNA are the kind of the delivery trucks of the cell. Their job is to collect various different types of amino acids and deliver these to the ribosomes in the cell. The ribosomes are really kind of tiny specks or granules within a cell, probably being around before even cellular life existed, were present in the primordial soup of the very early Earth. The role of the ribosomes is that of a factory, assembling the small pieces of amino acids brought to it by the delivery trucks of the transfer RNA into much larger proteins, which are essential for the proper functioning of a healthy cell. Now, however, the ribosomes don't just assemble any old protein they feel like. Instead, they bind with the ribosomal RNA, which basically gives the ribosome a code or a template as to which amino acid is brought with which other amino acid and what the precise order of the amino acid sequence is to be assembled in. That means that the RNA working together with the ribosomes can produce any protein on demand that the master DNA in the nucleus has the actual code for. Because of the temporary nature of RNA also means that a cell can control the rate of production of these proteins. The cell needs more of a particular type of protein can increase the amount of the specific RNA to assemble that protein. The cell needs less protein can stop production of that RNA and existing RNA structures will eventually break up and stop the production of the protein. However, there's some problems that come with this assembly method. If the master DNA in the nucleus doesn't contain the genetic information necessary to construct a protein, either through damage to the DNA structure or some kind of inherited genetic trait, then this protein can't be assembled by the cell. It can seriously impact the health of both the individual cell and the organism as a whole. Such individual uh, problems with DNA can result in humans in conditions such as cystic fibrosis and a muscular dystrophy and many others, a multitude of genetic traits that come through. However, the upside is it does mean also that by disrupting the ribosomes and protein synthesis in harmful bacteria, it's actually possible to kill or disable harmful bacteria, ending their threat to an infected person just by disrupting this protein synthesis.